In this video, I'm bringing you an in-depth interview with Marek Polchak, who is the CEO and co-founder of the VR Genius, the company behind the Xtel Next Generation VR headset for professionals. Coming up. Hi and welcome to MRTV. My name is Sebastian Ang and if this is your first time here and if you're just as excited about VR and AR as me, then subscribe now and click on the bell button so you don't miss anything. The Xtal VR headset is one of those next generation VR headsets with a wide field of view and a high resolution display. Now I flew to Prague to meet the VR engineers and to find out all about the Xtal. Now I'm really glad to bring you this in-depth interview with Marek Polchak who is the CEO and co-founder of the VR engineers. Now without further ado, here is the interview. All right, I'm here with Marek Polchak from the VR engineers and actually Marek you are the CEO and co-founder of the company. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Right, so um, this is what it's all about. This is your baby, this is the Xtal device. Could you tell our viewers a bit more about what exactly this device is and what's special about it? Yeah, th there, is, there is a lot of what I would like to share. Okay. Uh, that's our newest version of the headset. It's called Xtal, as you said, and it incorporates all the improvements uh, which we found out uh, necessary to make the professional headset convenient, basically. Because some time ago we released VR Hero, uh, which was, let's say, the first version which we developed. And uh, as every version, uh, we want to upgrade, we want to improve. And uh, the most, uh, what we focused on this time was convenience. Okay. Uh, so what we did was to really make the device more compact and smaller, uh, also lighter, even though we put in more functions, okay. which is always very challenging because you want to balance the technology as well as the comfort, nice. right? So for, the, for all these who have never heard of this device, so probably some people don't know about what, what is VR Hero. Um, so this actually, this is a VR headset with a very wide FOV and how I understood it, the clarity of the picture is what is special about this device, right? Yeah, yeah. We specialize and we are really target to achieve the best visual clarity and basically the most crisp image. And the idea is that uh, you need to do a lot of things to achieve that. Of course, it starts with high quality displays, mm -hmm. uh, but then you have a lot of algorithms mm -hmm. uh, to get rid of distortion, to get rid of rainbow effect and so on. And then, uh, of course, you have optics. And all of these needs to be well balanced to achieve really like the best picture which we are trying to do. Perfect. Yeah, I've just, I've tried it out now the whole day and I must say I'm really, wow, surprised like how clear it looks. So I think it, it's like the combination, just what you said, right? The combination of the, the lens and the, the display technology. Could yeah. Probably tell, tell us, tell me a bit more about uh, the combination of how everything works together to achieve this clarity of the picture. Of course. So it starts with the displays. Right now inside the Excel there are two Quad HD displays which mean each eye uh, has a native resolution of 2560 by 1440 uh, pixels which means it's quite a lot of pixels. We are using OLED displays, VR OLED, which means that they have some special functions, special configurations, which allows you to uh, basically lower the feeling of blur of any artifacts uh, and uh, run displays faster. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have the custom lenses. Uh, today, very common is that most of the headsets are using Fresnel lenses. Uh, we tested a lot of those. I mean, I literally spent one year traveling around the world, uh, buying samples from different Chinese companies, Japanese companies, UK companies, US companies, all, yes. all around the world. Mm -hmm. But at the end, uh, after we tested them with the displays, we found out that the clarity is not what we want to achieve. 
and therefore we were we, we basically had to develop our own lenses uh, and to be more precise we co-developed them so we we established a new company which is focused only on development of the lenses wow. uh, it's 50 percent owned on our side then we have their partners who are specialists in lenses development and uh, we basically managed to deliver what we what we see the the most crisp image ever Wow, so how long did, did it take you to make those lenses? Uh, the lenses took a lot of time, I would yeah. say, because our partners spent their uh, almost whole life developing different kinds okay. of lenses. It's yeah. not like uh, you decide and then okay. then it's here. It's same with the Extel. The, the reason why we were able to develop this hardware is because uh, our team uh, basically forged from university studies. We did a lot of projects together, research projects. We did a lot of commercial projects together, uh, developing different kinds of today it will be called IoT devices mm -hmm. for uh, starting hospitals and ending security systems. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, when you then gather this knowledge about the design of the hardware and the firmware and the software layers and also lenses, yeah. uh, when you combine all of these, only and only then you are able to basically build and develop such device from scratch. That's nice. So I really like the lenses because as compared to other devices, you don't see any god rays anymore, right? Like, like most of the companies now use Fresnel lenses. And I was wondering why would these companies use Fresnel lenses when you have these kind of problems with the god rays that you don't have at all? Uh, in every technology you have some limitations, okay. right? Yeah. And for example, what are Fresnel lenses good uh, is that uh, you are able to make device even smaller. Ah, so that's one. That's, that's one plus, for example. Or another is that uh, you can achieve even wider field of view. With this kind of lenses, it's more uh, demanding. Mm -hmm. But on the other side, uh, instead of doing like 200 and more degrees uh, visible field of view, we are actually doing the opposite. We are trying to squeeze pixels so yeah. they are as close as possible so you really don't see the grid, you don't have the feeling of screen door at all. But still we are able to manage to have very above average field of view yes. which should make you uh, comfortable and the device is then usable for different kind of simulations as well. Perfect. So did I get that right that you made an effort not to make the biggest FOV because for sure you could have done so, right? Like other companies, like just try to make the biggest FOV, but instead you made it like 170 degrees, which is still wider than what is on the market right now, in order to make the picture more more clear by having yeah. more pixel per degree. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. And the, 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 the hard thing about it is uh, that, for example, people are asking, uh, what is your uh, pixel density per degree? But our custom-made optics is uh, non, uh, is aspherical. It does not have like a l linear distribution of pixels. Actually, in every degree has different amount of pixels. Okay. But what we are doing is we are really uh, shrinking mm -hmm. Uh, pixels or the whole display uh, to the main, I would say, super focused area where the picture should be completely crisp. Okay, yeah, I saw that. Like wherever, wherever I looked, actually looked very clear, like crystal clear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great. So, um, so that's about the lenses. They are yes. custom made by by your joint venture with with another uh, lens company, which is cool. But now let's more talk about. Um, the display technology. So you said you're using now OLED, right? So you, you went from LCD to yes. OLED? Yeah. So before yeah, yeah, yeah. on the on the hero you used L C D and now you're using OLED? Yeah, yeah. And uh, tell again, us why. Why did you do that? Why did you uh, do that change? Like uh, when we started basically uh, with the development with all our efforts there were no OLED displays with such high pixel density. Okay. And again I'm I'm like 
I'm technician. I'm engineer. I'm looking from the from this point of view, and uh, I'm really not like uh, saying OLED is the best or LCD is the best. I think that they both have some pros and cons, as every technology. I mean, LCDs yeah. are cheaper, uh, but they uh, they last uh, longer. I mean, with OLEDs, uh, you have better dynamic colors. You are able to uh, switch much faster, which yes. means you don't need the backlight. Therefore, they are, again, uh, not that uh, thick. Okay. So you have always some pros and cons. Yeah. And we started with LCDs because that was our only option to achieve the clarity. Uh, and then we switched to OLEDs because uh, we get a lot of feedback uh, the picture is is ghosting, blurry, Got and it. so on. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are we are still improving everything mm -hmm. because the idea is that uh, you always have let's say a list of priorities yeah. and you remove the top one, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that you remove the top one. It means that the second one moved to the upper position. Got it. Got it. Okay. But anyways, even even now with this. Even though the resolution is not like like a, I don't know like 4K or what, still it's so clear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We are we are I getting mean, a lot of people who actually tried everything else what's on the market yeah, and what's not even on the market. Yeah. And I think that that uh, listeners will will uh, understand what I mean by that. And that they even specialists came to me and asked why why is it possible even uh, how you achieve this uh, high pixel density yeah. and that's because of the combination. Uh, I'm always trying to explain that on the same uh, story uh, about how the how the cameras work. Mm -hmm. I mean uh, you have here today with you your mobile phone with yeah. very high resolution uh, camera, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know how, how many pixels. I, I also don't know. I don't know. I would guess, or... yeah, it's it's above ten million yeah. uh, megapixels, yes. right? Yes, for sure. But we and it does decent photographies for sure. Very That's nice cool. videos, I can imagine. Yeah. Uh, but again, it's not the same as if you buy the highest level red camera, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which True. can have even lower resolution. Yeah. But still, the pictures will be somehow better. And that somehow it's the lens, right? The optics, probably, right? It's the optics. It's the chip itself. It's the noise signal ratio. It's yeah. the algorithms. Okay. Uh, there is like complex mesh because uh, mixture, complex mixture of things. You have to really tweak and tune yeah. to achieve that. Okay, got it. So it's not really, it's not really only the resolution, right? So you cannot say, okay, this has two point five K. Per, uh, per eye and then the, another one has probably 4K per eye, it doesn't mean that the 4K is automat automatically better. No, no, <laughs> that, that's why I'm always trying to, to uh, say to people, uh, this is visual thing, you yeah. have to try out, you have to make your opinion, because otherwise it's just a spec wars. Okay, tell us a bit more. Tell us a bit more about the um, the auto IPD. I think that's something something really interesting about your device. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, auto uh, auto i uh, auto IPD uh, is about again making the device more convenient, much easier to use, and uh, really even fast to switch between different people. Because uh, the thing we found out is that when you are really using VR. Uh, you need it to be as precise as possible uh, and have as relevant and as real picture as possible. And a crucial part of that is right adjustment. Uh, and what else are we adjusting than the head strap and the IPD? And when you are a professional who did model of car you or you are doing content for some PR event, uh, and you spent a lot of time thinking about the story, preparing the textures, making it as fluent, as smooth, greatest. And then someone tries out and then has this strong, like weird feeling, something was yeah, not right. Off. Yeah, but we are not able to reproduce that. It's hard to say what's wrong when you are immersed. Mm -hmm. uh, because it can be a lot of things, a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. uh, wrong adjustment in the software, uh, wrong setting of parallax. 
and it can be IPD. And actually what we found out is that IPD is often the case and we want to avoid that. We want our users to have the best possible picture all the time. So when you put the headset on, uh, then we are actually measuring your eyes. We are measuring them with cameras, uh, with the system that we developed from scratch. So we are not dependent on any third party producer or uh, vendor lock or anything. Uh, so we measure your eyes and then the servo motors which are inside automatically adjust accordingly to your eyes. Yeah, it was pretty magic. Like in the moment you put it on and then you hear the yeah. and you hear the, the movement of the, of the lens and then suddenly your IPD is perfectly set. That's cool because normally you have to try to find it by yourself and well, well, I know my IPD, obviously, but not everybody knows their IPD, right? It's like uh, no, seldom people no, know that. A lot of people don't even know what's IPD, yeah. that it's actually the distance, the distance between the between eyes. Between your eyes, and yes. it makes a big difference if a headset is perfectly set or not, right? So it's interesting to have this technology. So I, I suppose that you have uh, it patented, so only you can use it, or are you going to license it out? What is the what is your plan with the auto eye? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We have we have certain patents. Uh, we are patenting in US uh, as the first market, and uh, the truth is that uh, we think that. A lot of things that we are developing and we are actually pioneering in this VR uh, slash, let's say, MR, XR space uh, can be useful also uh, for other devices as well. And we hope that, that other companies will approach us uh, proactively or we will approach them and, and basically move the, the whole technology forward. because. The thing that, that keeps us running is to do something new, do it better, like move the technological uh, advancement of our time, of people, of engineers around the world further. And that's what we are like deeply uh, committed to do and we would like to continue in that for sure. Nice. So it also sounds like this is your, your vision, like your job is to make the, the most clearest picture that you can find in VR. Is this your vision? Yeah, or? yeah that's, that's exactly what I'm seeking. That's my lighthouse, basically. Nice. And uh, the, the, the way I see it is that in a few years, let's say between uh, three, uh, three to five years, I estimate, uh, we will be able to really develop the device which is uh, smaller, more comfortable, you will be able to use it uh, basically whole workday and we will be able to provide you completely full field of view uh, with the resolution that you will not be able to determine if it's real or not, or not real. Yeah. You're getting close already, I think. So I, I used it for the whole day now and um, yeah, when I was looking at these car models, when I was in the car and looking Looking at, for example, the material of the seats, I can tell, hey, this is some kind of uh, leather. This is even, even full leather. I can tell just by looking through your device. And I think that is, that is pretty awesome. And I think that makes a difference to, to other headsets. And I believe that's why this is perfectly suited for, for, for work, right? For like um, professional users. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we are targeting professionals. Uh, we found out that the most suitable, let's say, businesses and enterprises are currently in automotive, aerospace, I would say even the whole transportation and the heavy, heavy machinery, because these guys are in the VR for a long time, uh, for more than a decade, because uh, a lot of people, I would say, that thinks that uh, VR came out from nothing, from uh, the first uh, Kickstarter of DK1. But uh, there's been this industry for years, even before, uh, because we have companies like uh, Envis, like Sensix, producing different VR headsets, which most people never heard about because they were very expensive from like consumer point of view but they've been used for a long time in the industry mm -hmm. and uh, now with new technologies we are able to upgrade uh, 
It's not like uh, inventing something completely new. It's upgrading, it's, it's part of the evolution. And I think that we will see very rapid and fast improvements over the next few years. I think so. So um, you're selling this now to the automotive industry mostly or to which kind of industries? Yeah, yeah, mostly automotive, uh, transportation, aerospace, some simulations, yeah. uh, some uh, real pioneers, for example, in construction mm -hmm. and architecture, architecture space uh, and also in, uh, in healthcare for a training uh, and also for like remote assistance, I would say. Got it. Yeah, it makes, it makes perfect sense, right? You, you, you can see your model perfectly in 3D just as if you're there because you, you cannot tell anymore if it's real or not. So this is incredible. You know what, who's going to be sad? all the consumers who cannot have this <laughs> yeah right? i know i know I mean, and I'm, I'm like literally sorry that we are not <laughs> able to to right now produce it for the price which will be uh basically same as all the other headsets yeah. uh but but it, it comes with the steps right with our first model we've been selling it for almost ten thousand. Wow. Okay. Uh, now we were able to improve the technology and drop the price almost to half and uh, with, now? Uh, right now we are selling for 4,800 euros okay. uh, and uh, I believe that, that in further development we will be able to again improve the quality and make the device more available that even like contractors, professional modelers will be able to afford one because they will see uh, its added value. Well, I think you really have to see it yourself to, to believe it, right? I mean, you can tell people now hey, it's clear, but you need really to check it yourself. Yeah, that's, right? that's true. That's why we spend a lot of time on different events, presenting okay. yeah. uh, last year on SIGGRAPH uh, all around the world. Yeah. And a uh, good point is that right now, uh, even though we are not in event, uh, even though we are not even in Germany, in your uh, born country, we are sitting in our offices here in Prague, uh, where is base for our development. And uh, we are inviting uh, business and enterprise clients to come here to really experience not only the headset, but its combination with different software tools they are using with different tracking devices, with different controllers and such. Yeah, I think um, if anybody is in Prague, they can just check it out themselves, right? They yeah. just make an appointment with you? Just, just contact us at uh, through our website yeah. uh, to our Prague office and we will be able to schedule a meeting here. Perfect. It's, I think it's really the difference, right? To try it yourself and to get an idea of uh, what it means to make the, the clearest possible VR experience that you can probably yeah. do, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the people who tried uh, were actually impressed. They were happy that it's it's possible because yeah. we all, as, as the VR community, we all want to make it better. It's not, uh, it's not like uh, someone is trying to build the wrong device. No, yeah, everyone Everybody's is trying. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we are part of that community. And, and the thing is that uh, when we travel and people, for example, like Charlie Fink from US Forbes, uh, recognized that he he actually wrote a very nice article about us in US Forbes which uh, your uh, your subscribers can find out and read about the Excel and his uh, perception of the device got it so um, can if let's say if if I'm if I'm in in, uh, in a company I'm working on on 3d modeling and I want to bring it to the next level now if I want to if I want to let my engineers envision it and see it really in, in, in VR. Can they purchase this device now already? Yeah, they can purchase it. Uh, we are starting del delivering since, uh, since next month, which is September. Uh, the devices are ready. We are just tweaking the software. Wow, fantastic. So they can really get it now. Yes. And um, what kind of um, hardware do they need to run it? 
Uh, the good thing is that if they are used to work uh, with any of like professional system, professional software, let's say, uh, their demands are um, most likely higher than ours. Uh, our device you can uh, connect to basically any VR ready PC. Uh, what we recommend is to use uh, 1080 uh, NVIDIA, uh, which is quite okay, 1080 Ti better, yeah. Titan, for sure better yeah. and Quadro when you are really uh, need to okay. use like CAD systems and Got professional it. visualization for sure. Got it. So yeah, I was surprised. Um, the first experience was this War Thunder um, simulator and it was like perfectly, perfectly, per I mean the visual quality was great and the refresh rate and you told me this was running on a GDX 1080, 1080 something yeah. that lots of us have actually at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did a lot of work uh, like improving the performance, even though we have much more pixels yeah. uh, and you need to count them. We don't need that much of, for example, anti-aliasing. Okay. Uh, so therefore the, the actual size of rendered image is almost the same mm -hmm. and we uh, utilized the, the NVIDIA VR works which helps a lot uh, performance wise mm -hmm. and therefore yeah you are able to like connect it to your standard VR PC and you are good to go. That's incredible. So one more reason for gamers to be a bit sad that at the moment it is a bit priced out of that range but I think like well, what do you think? What what would be needed to bring it down to like um, thousand five hundred US dollars? The scaling up, the scaling, like exactly. yeah, yeah, <laughs> producing hundreds of thousands or okay. lower millions of Already, devices. Okay, so yeah. so we need to get to this place. Wow. Or how about you do a Kickstarter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, in the Kickstarter, I don't think that uh, we will be able to get hundreds of thousands yeah, of right, workers. Exactly, I mean, exactly. at the moment, yeah. we, we, we know how it works. The yeah. Kickstarter itself is a great platform, but uh, since we are mostly facing B2B customers, okay. uh, they are not that willing to chip into something what mostly has uh, huge delays. Like, of course. Uh, when we promise, we have to deliver. When of you course, don't deliver right. one, into German automotive, yeah, it means it's uh, it's, you it's have over. To be on time, German. You, yeah, <laughs> it's you, on time. That's on time. exactly the word. Exactly. So, from from your customers who already use the device, what kind of feedback do you get? Uh, mostly, we are getting it's the it's the crispiest image ever. Yeah, crystal clear. That's crystal why you clear. Call it yeah. Crystal. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was one one of the ideas. Uh, because because that's that's our main goal, our main priority, and it's good that uh, we are getting back. Yes, yes, that's what you achieved. That's actually what I can see when I wear the headset for the very first minute. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, of course, they they ask about a lot of things about how is it possible about the lenses and so on. Uh, but I would say that the second uh, big. Uh, immersion uh, gets with with the integrated leap motion sensor so you okay. see your bare hands there here here is the leap motion controller right the yeah the yeah, yeah. that's the latest version to it that's the latest version and we are happy to be like first commercially available headset with the full integration of leap motion because we've been working on that for quite some time and uh, even though they are in California and we, are, we have our development here in Europe, mm -hmm. we managed that, we achieved it and I think it's great. Yeah, so I've, I've just used the software, like I think the software that you just used to show off the device, right? Yeah. So I could see my hands in VR and then I could also like um, access a menu by simply turning my hand and uh, when I was looking at the car model, I could open the door and I think this is super useful for professional for the professional case, right? Yeah, we are trying to to like make uh, make actual use cases easier to work with, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, right now we are in the stage of evaluation of of something what was created at the computer to have a look in the VR mm -hmm. and. Uh, 
having hands really helps because you have much better observation yeah. of the depth of the sizes you can do some simple things like click button nothing too much complicated mm -hmm. uh, for right now I would say but we are getting there and we are getting there fast and that uh, together with the combination of voice commands uh, really makes you uh, basically a superhero inside the VR space because you just say something, you just click something and yeah. actually the whole environment changes and you are able to, to achieve the, these tweaks inside the VR very fast and uh, very, very easy. It feels a bit like science fiction when I was just like standing at the car and I, I said, okay, take me to the desert and suddenly I was in the desert with that car. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. And then to have that emotion there, see my hands there, it is a pretty, pretty nice package. So I would like to know from you, what is next for this device? So this is already an iteration over your first headset that you had. You had this um, called what, a Hero, yeah. it was called. VR Hero. VR Hero. And um, yeah, now this is your next device and you're going to start to iterate on this one as well, I suppose. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what we are planning are upgrades of this actual device. Okay. Uh, we've uh, published them this week, uh, earlier this week. So I'm free to talk about them with you today, which is okay, great. Perfect. Uh, so what we are preparing is first uh, hardware module uh, with uh, pass-through cameras, front-facing cameras, so you will be able to even uh, do the mixed reality or XR, XR scenarios with the current headset because it has already prepared electronics inside to just connect the, the module. Mm -hmm. uh, then we will enable uh, software, our SDK, with new functions which will allow you to access our eye tracking cameras as well as algorithms which are counting the exact center of the eye pupil. And because we on the full stack, I mean the low, ver, uh, low firmware uh, levels as well as the driver uh, layer as well as the uh, data flow we are able to supply to developers to really be able to, to utilize that function. So you, um, you own the full stack, Is that's because you develop your own eye tracking solution. It's not yes. like you buy eye tracking from Toby or so, you no. make everything yourself. No, uh, we did not and we decided to do that because first of all, uh, during my studies at university, I've spent about five years uh, working on different eye tracking systems. So okay. that technology is quite uh, known to me as well as to a few of, of our uh, developers and engineers. And second, uh, I was afraid that we will have a vendor lock uh, which will uh, limit us to provide exactly these data which I think are necessary to again move the technology forward again as the community because I think that, that developers who have use cases in marketing, in uh, disease recognition, in, uh, in uh, like scenarios like uh, improving uh, children to read properly, mm -hmm. uh, they need much more data than they are able to get from uh, simple uh, and basic recognition of where people are looking. Okay, so you can just gather more data because you own the whole stack. Yes, that's, that's cool. exactly Perfect. It. So yeah, I can just say for any companies who would like to help their engineers visualize things in VR, probably this is the best headset you can get right now. So. They should simply get in touch with you and make an appointment. Yeah, connect us, connect us through our website. That's the easiest one or uh, through social media. We are, we are active in uh, all, all different channels yeah. and we will get back to you. We will try to understand your use case because we think that's that's necessary part of that. Uh, we are able to uh, make the device compatible with the software you are using because mm -hmm. a lot of clients even develop their own engines internally because they have very specific need. And again, we are able to help with that and we are willing to do that. Great. Yeah, Marek, thank you so much for letting me know about the Excel device and I think lots of the viewers will be very excited to get in touch with you and to learn more about the device. Thank you.
Thank you. So that's it for my interview with Marek Polchak. Without a doubt, the XTEL is a very, very exciting VR headset, and I'm personally looking forward to hear much more from the VR engineers. Now, that's it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If yes, give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you have not yet subscribed to MRTV yet, do so now. I'm looking forward to see you in the next episode. Thank <laughs> you.